It's an order. Oh, oh, I think we got that. Good morning again. Um, so calling the meeting to order at 1030. Um, and the first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the February meeting. I would entertain a motion. Thank you, Jeff. I need a second, please. Also, thank you, Diane. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, moving on. Committee reports. Rhonda, circulation committee. You want to come up here? Possible. Good morning. I think a packet went out to you, so most of what I need to say is already in that. Um, thank you uh, to Popper Bluff and Barry Lawrence for the last two regional trainings that we had. We are looking at for doing the last one for this round um, sometime in late August, uh, early September, in the northwest quadrant of the state. So um, that's going to be coming down the pipe with more um, information coming out. The committee has finalized the recommendation on how to handle the situation when a patron comes in to your library and requests the card. They already have a card and another Missouri Evergreen library. So that uh, wording is also in the um, packet that went out, but I'll just go ahead and read it for those of you who are here. Um, a new account may be created as long as patrons do not have outstanding charges on other Missouri Evergreen accounts. If other Missouri Evergreen accounts are failed and there are outstanding charges that exceed your library's fines slash fee, uh, threshold, ask the patron to reconcile the charges on their other accounts first before creating a new account. Um, so this is a recommendation from the CERT committee. <laughs> We're going to be posting it on our best practices. Um, circulation committee has also been tasked um, with developing um, some procedures to deal with data integrity and governance throughout the consortium. So there will be information uh, we're working on it uh, hopefully next week and by the June um, membership meeting we have we hope to have something to bring forward to you on that. That's it. Okay, thank you. All right, next up is Cataline Committee, Kate Cole and Liz. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I just want to talk about what we were, were doing in the committee real quick. We are doing, um, we talked a lot yesterday about our monthly reports, and we are almost complete with every single one of those, those reports has a step-by-step -step instructions on what, what it is, what to do with it, and why we need to do it. So we went over that yesterday, but these will be written down step-by-step -step instructions. Um, there's also a guide just in general on how to manipulate your reports in Excel to get what we need out of it. And we talked again about that yesterday. Those of you that weren't here yesterday, uh, we had some great sessions, so it was good. Um, like Jennifer was just talking about, we are also working about uh, deciding, aligning our permission levels with our certification uh, needs. And so we are aligning that and we're getting that all worked out. And uh, I think it'll be finalized pretty soon. And then, um, the image uploader workflow. There is going to be, we, we all know that this is a cool feature. Um, we can't just give it to anybody, sorry. <laughs> so we're working on a workflow within our uh, committee to see how we wanna do it because we do know that um, several libraries probably have hundreds of things that they wanna get their pictures onto in this uh, first initial push. So we're trying to consider that um, and then how we're gonna do it after that initial push you know, in our day-to-day. -day. So that's what we're working on in the committee. Okay, what is Liz and cooking? Regional trainings, guys. We're halfway through, but there are three still coming up. Livingston, 519, Poplar Bluff, 69, and Trail, 623. Um, if you want to know how the other ones went, I can, you know, ask people who've been there. I can send you, and they can, like, secretly tell you how Kate and I are in um, that <laughs> setting in case you're scared about it. Um, but be there, be square. We do cover anything from, like, we talk about, like, just Mark. We go all the way up to like advanced catalog. So there is something for everybody, and it is very question based. And who is there? Please come. We won't bite you, I swear. 
Um, also, what are we talking? Oh, the authority load. Okay, so as Galen mentioned yesterday, they're working on getting rid of the duplicate authority. It's twenty five thousand or so has been deleted. Um, as this project is being completed and finally gets completed, we will talk about authority training. And that will be an added like training that we will all talk about. And then after it's done this time, it will get added into the basic and advanced certification. So, so 25,000 duplicates have been deleted already, but yes. we still, I mean, there's over like 90,000 90, 90, that are going to be, and these are just duplicate ones that are messing everything up. Yeah. And then once we get the authority, our authority file nice and clean and working well, then we can. Training and we can know what that means and how a, the, the authority file helps us in our template. So that's it, I guess. Questions? All right, thank you both. All right, um, I can guarantee you this if you come to the uh, Kelly and training at Livingston County Library, you will be fed well. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Saying those words, um, and I'm sure uh, there's going to be quite the accommodations for the other um, libraries as well for the the Halloween training. But I said sooner, so <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on, um, reports committee. Tony, are you with us today virtually? Yeah. 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 No. Tony did a really nice session for us yesterday. Um, I know um, most of the presentation slides are uh, on the SCED platform. So once again, I'm just gonna put out a little shout out there for them to, for you to go get those presentation slides um, just for your reference. And then if you've got questions or concerns then you can actually go talk to the presenters about, hey, what was this about? Um, all right, going on um, onboarding committee. Leanne, are you with us today? Hi, yes, I am. Hey. All right, uh, don't have too much to go over, just a um, rundown of the next libraries that are coming on board. So we have St. Joseph coming here soon, May 11th. In July, we have Cape Girardeau, Nevada in September, Morgan County in November, and Bonterre is on the list as well. Um, and then the other thing I just want to mention is if anyone is interested in joining the onboarding committee, just please contact me and we'd love to have some more people get involved with this. And one of the things that um, I know the executive board have been talking to you, um, Leanne, about, and therefore I do understand the call for, for more committee members to join you, is actually um, having some onboarding documentations for new um, library directors um and or new staff um those are things that we as as we all know there's there's turnover there's reasons why people leave why they come back or you know those things and get hired so i think actually having some kind of documentation um and uh, i don't um, i don't want to say a training manual but but that's the that's the one of the uh, directions that we're asking the awarding committee to do so if you have some great knowledge and some skills please join leanne for that, as we try to get some of that documentation for the new directors and new staff hires that we all seem to have. So, anyway, anything else we need? Any questions for Leah? And your contact information is? Uh, just contact me at Leanne, L E E A N N, at blrlibrary.org. And I can go ahead and put that in the chat as well. That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> and I asked. Know that um, Tony uh, is also looking for committee members for the reports committee. So if you have anything um, technically minded, um, which I am not, um, you know, just if you have that expertise and have love that data and love stats and statistics, um, uh, yeah, get a hold of Tony um, and get on his committee as well. All right. The next thing on the agenda is the executive board retreat. And strategic planning. Got it. All right. I'm I'm just going to do a quick overview. Um, we met the executive board met um, on Wednesday. Uh, we had a full day with um, Dr. Diana Berry. Um, she was formerly with the State Library. Um, she has great experience with consortium work. 
Um, so, um, so we met with, with her and with Mickey, um, Liz, um, and a lot of, of Kate. See, so yeah, I, I get people, you know, executive board, um, and, um, and getting all, all of that, you know, going forward, we, need, we, we felt that we needed to have a strategic plan outline. So we created a vision statement, which is different from the mission statement that I talked about yesterday. Um, our core values are these, business stability, transparency, but if you know, if you ever attended me, a meeting with me, I, I'm always talking about transparency. Um, trust, affordability, accuracy, and sustainability. Those are our core values. Those are the things that we're striving for. Um, our concentrated areas of focus are staffing, consortial staffing, um, executive director, consortium cataloger, uh, migration specialist, maybe adding more positions as our, as our cons consortium continues to grow. Um, it's very important for us to have that staffing because we are too large, right, Shannon? We are too large um, to do this on a volunteer basis. We're too large of a consortium. We're still asking more members to join us. So we actually need to have consortium staff. Funding. Funding, funding, funding. If you have any um, knowledge about funding sources, um, grants that we can apply for outside of the state libraries grants, um, I, I will always um, highly, highly tout the offerings that the Missouri State Library offers the, the consortium, um, um, their willingness to um, listen to us, to help us in our, our plans and funding through LSTA, uh, for, through IMLS and LSTA funds, but we also need other outside sources. So if there's other outside grants, um, um, a foundation, hey, you've got a local foundation that, hey, is looking for a bigger project for the whole state of Missouri, you know, let us know. Um, let us, you know, let us know and we can, we can research that and we can find out, you know, I'm, I'm all about um, finding all kinds of different funding sources. Um, also, the other thing that was funding was um, we were looking at budgets, um, fees, and everything else. So just know that whatever comes of all of the action plans, the objectives and the goals of the action plans for the concentrated areas of focus, those will be related to everybody before anything happens. Um, the other thing was member education. Um, you know, basically getting getting everybody aligned um, and going uh, going forward um, and making sure that we have training offerings that we are that we are servicing our our, our staff our, our our library staff as well and also our, our member education just for directors um, knowing uh, there was a whole slide yesterday about how to be involved and how to hear, have your voice heard and actually learning the things that that makes this consortium work. Um, so the three main goals, I will quickly go through them um, and then I'm going to wrap that part up. Goal one is to provide Missouri Evergreen ILS public libraries in Missouri to create shared resources and services that are controlled and maintained by Missouri public libraries through the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. That's been goal for day one. Um, goal two develop an effective and efficient business model to control the management of staff, finances, onboarding, training, and necessary business services required of our organization. That goes back to the concentrated area of staffing. Goal three, um, develop a stratified training program to educate library staff at different levels of experience to provide Missouri Evergreen certification program. Case in point, cataloging certification. Now we're looking at other areas where we can actually certify staff and it will always be a, a, a continuing education a model. What to expect as we work through those objectives and those action items? Surveys, we need your feedback. So if you, if Mickey or the executive director is posting the survey, we need for you to respond. That's one way to hear your, that we can hear your voice. Listening posts. We'll have relevant discussions concerning what's important to you and your library success. At your library, 
through email, over a phone, through a Zoom, however we need to make that happen, we will make that happen. Um, training events. I think that's going to be another element for all of our training events going forward is having that listening post so we can hear what, what's on your mind. Um, communications with the boards and committees. Notifications of important meetings, proposed changes, votes, and all in the name of transparency. What else? What else do you want the board to know? How could you relay that information? We need to hear from you, and that's what we're asking you to do. Anything else that we need to add to that strategic plan? Okay. We're going to do the financial report. Jeff and Kristen with Amigos. Tag your it. Which one? Um, <laughs> outstanding. This report, we uh, have received most of our membership. And, um, so, yeah, we think they're mutual. Yay, snaps everybody for being on the time. <laughs> Kristen, do you want to add some more? Um, um, yeah, just what Jeff said, this is the quiet time of year right now. Um, all of the uh, membership dues have been received uh, for this fiscal year, um, except for the ones that are going to be coming on. Um, so yay for that. And so right now we're just paying the expenses as they come in. And uh, things will probably get busier towards uh, August, September when we're closing out the year and starting to do this. All right. Thank you so much. That was a, a grant uh, payment that we received in February of uh, over $47,000. Yeah. Grants are vital to our existence. I hope you, everybody understands that. Um, all right. Missouri State Library, Janet, do you have anything to add? You attended the training yesterday, um, and we're very um, happy that you're here with us today. Hi, um, for the people that don't know me, I am the technology and resource sharing consultant at the Missouri State Library. And through resource sharing, the three things I oversee is the Missouri Evergreen Grant, the grant with the uh, MOLA for Career Service, and OCLC ILL. So all that works together. Uh, yesterday in the last presentation, there was kind of joking about how much support um, the LSTA funds provide for uh, Missouri Evergreen. And this year it is at 75% of the Equinox hosting support. And next year for FY24, we have budgeted that at 85%. Ways that we support Evergreen is also through uh, the career service. Now that is for all public libraries that um, do resource sharing, so it's not just Missouri Evergreen. Um, but you do the bulk of the sharing within the state, and we look at the annual volume to uh, each library to determine if you receive one, two, or three days of subsidized uh, delivery to your library. And if you want more than that, then you do have the option of working with all directly to have additional days paid by the library. For OCLC, uh, we do a 100% subscription for winter care and library loan and um, first search world cat discovery. And this year we're looking at and ILL is for just certain libraries based on whether they use ILL. It's not all libraries use FPLC ILL. And first search is actually um, available to all libraries. Um, and this year we found out some little quirks working with OCLC, one being that the list of libraries that we provide ILL subscription to is not the same list of libraries that receive for search of the world cat discovery. We did not know that, and in FY24, we're going to put each list of those within our contract, and we're looking at uh, what we need to do moving forward. Part of moving forward is, again, looking at those lists 
looking at statistics of each library, do you use first search or role cat discovery for staff or patrons? Do you use ILL? Or are you doing mainly your resource sharing through Missouri Evergreen? Um, so if you do most of your sharing through Missouri Evergreen, there's a chance of like you really use ILL just like two times during the year. Um, you may not use the best version. Um, you can always still request items from other libraries using ALA. In their library so that's one thing we're looking at. Another way of, for us supporting Evergreen is looking at cataloging subscription. I know Katie's over there with your getting a cataloging subscription. And that would be for the consortium. Um, we were thinking only for the consortium cataloger and kind of trickle down, but what we kind of Preliminary discussions with OCLC is that it would be a group subscription for all Evergreen members, um, and that would be full catalog, not that express, not small library. Of it. So we're looking at that. Um, the cost for public libraries is based on their population area served and circulation. So I, they would have looked at that for whether we got just consortium only. Um, so uh, that'd be for everyone. And then they put a group discount on top of that. Do they let you know what size of <laughs> at this time? But for those of you who have worked with their CLC, the it bears, it bears to work with. <laughs> yeah, and we kind of like, hey, how did you come up with this pricing in the past? And it's like, well, it's historical. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, they historical based on uh, isolation, based on budget, based on CERT. So um, I've been with the State Library since 2019. And so the, kind of the previous years, <laughs> Including what well, to kind of pivot with me in COVID. Um, focus on that. We were working on really looking at Mala and Evergreen. And so now it's time for us to look at OCLC and the whole contract and what we can do in ways to serve libraries within the state. And this year for the contract or for our grant for sorry, Evergreen, we've provided funds for the conference. Um, next year, we will not be doing that. Um, we work, we talked with Nikki and Sue about that. But we are hoping to get you know, other ways to support you that really help you and is more cost prohibitive for Missouri Evergreen to do as a resource. That's what we're working on. Um, Robin and the staff are. Slowly, well, not slowly, um, keeping our ear to the ground about what's going on with state aid and what we want to do with the admin goal. The admin goal goes into effect on May 30th. And Robin should be contacting some directors to get a group together to work on the Sample collection development policies for those libraries. I believe uh, Katie, but uh, president of NPLD, is okay with her on that. I, I know that it can't necessarily come from the state library's office, but I think um, Robin is being um, an advisory um, person, um, and, but NPLD would be the one um, broadcasting that out. Um, those sample policies, um, collection development, challenge policies, um, and things like that, uh, in order for us to. All succeed in our state obligations. And then the other thing we're watching is the uh, House budget hearings and process to see what happens with state aid. I think that we're all kind of getting a little lesson about um, how bills are passed um, and how and the whole legislative process, which is good for us to learn as well because it does impact. All of our libraries. Um, so we learn as we go, right? Um, 
I don't know if there's any grants that are open, but you can go on to the website and find out if there's any grants open. Uh, I know later in the year we'll have another technology grant. And yeah, the PLA um, from 2022, those that survey has not been um, verified yet, correct, at the federal level? Is that where we're at? Correct. Um, let's see. Organization that, but we received stats back and we had to do just a little bit of cleanup and whatever. And then there's just one little final step, right? It's kind of that will be probably, well, definitely before the end of April, but I want to be surprised if it's next week. Okay, that's on the website. And that's important too, Missouri Elderly Libraries, just for the fact of the fiscal year. Um, next fiscal year budget for Missouri Evergreen fees are based on your budget. And according to the PLA survey, the late PLA survey, so that would have been 2022. Um, so we're and waiting for those to be verified and those to come out. So therefore, we are coming forward with our, our budget for our next fiscal year for, for the institution. Any questions? Thank you. It was nice seeing you here in person. I'm glad I was able to come and able to sit in instead of seeing these little boxes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I I one I know this uh probably an attendant sheet that's going around. If you have that sign map, maybe on this side of the room, let's go. Yeah, we yeah, signed on the sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you put me on there because I didn't sign it. Um, <laughs> That'd be great. Um, that way, uh, Rebecca, um, our, our secretary, she'll have um, that record and add it with the online people that I'm sure that they were probably already directed to put their name in their library and on the chat box for attendance for today's meeting as well. Um, right. Um, there's, I think we're ready for um, Mala. Is Jane with us today? She is. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. So I can only see Sue, but I'm sure I'm just imagining a room full of people. So Sue looks great. I'm sure you all look great. So I've, I have lots of news. So we finally have a new career coordinator. She started March 15th. Her name is Katrina High. So she is slow. She's actually very quickly learning the job. So um, we will have our first meet and greet with her in May. So check your newsletter we send out. I think it's usually the second or third Wednesday. Um, you can meet her via Zoom. Um, she's great. Uh, she's now responding to anything you put on the um, spreadsheet with problems, et cetera, with um, some guidance from Marcy and I. But like I said, she's catching on quick. We are already loving her, though still missing Linda. Um, okay, so we've been dealing with Cedar County. I don't know what you've all discussed on that. Um, so just a couple things to clarify. There was some misunderstanding that it was going to be super easy for Henry to just switch to the other branch. That is not the case at all. It's a totally different route with a totally different volume load on that other route. So we're a little concerned right now of um, what's gonna happen with the volume load because this volume, He's got this person has a bigger route that has more items. So to add in a library could cause a little problem. However, since we don't really know if their volume is going to stay the same, since one of their locations is shuttered right now, using their wording, um, we're just playing it by ear. So we're just keeping an eye on it. Um, the new label should be made Monday or Tuesday. Um, so please, please, please make sure you get rid of all Stockton labels. The new labels will say El Dorado Springs. Um, and the problem is if you use a Stockton label, since they're not on the same route, they're just gonna sit in the warehouse till someone says, oh yeah, that's the library that's closed and they'll send them back to you. You know, they can't keep track. They deliver a million different things. So please don't use any Stockton labels. Um, just destroy those. El Dorado Springs labels will be out. I'm sorry, my dog wants to participate. Um, the El Dorado Springs labels will be on the label maker, just like the Stockton ones were, but it has different coding. So it's going to have a whole different number. So that's always 
the issue when we either change um, Nevada moved from Joplin to Kansas City, so people kept using the old labels for quite a long time, even after lots of emails asking people not to. So that gets that is a problem. They got their last delivery at Stockton today. Uh, a board member went and got it. So hopefully they were pretty caught up with what they had to miss two or three deliveries because no one, you know, we just canceled because they couldn't get anybody to be there. So they should start their new deliveries on Wednesday. So that is um, good news for them that they're going to have their deliveries again. Um, just a reminder, as part of your grant, um, you need to report your outgoing um, materials by the fifth of the month for the previous month. So um, there's most of you do it great. And the people who don't might not even be part of Evergreen, but we still have some that come in like on the 20th for the previous month. So we need to probably work on tightening that up. And again, it's just outgoing. And it, a lot of you have already figured out if your last delivery of the month's like on the 28th, just based on the day, you can go ahead and do that month then. You don't have to wait till the actual new month it registers and you just put in what month it's on. So just a little housekeeping reminder on that. Got my list on my phone here. Um, annual agreements are starting to go out. Um, for those who are new, because I know there's always lots of new people, that is the agreement everybody signs, whether you're paying or not paying. If the state library is paying for it, you still need to read, sign your annual agreement um, and send it back to us. So we did have a, a problem with a couple libraries last year not understanding that they thought it was for only um, people who pay for extra days. Um, with that annual agreement, there'll be some mention of the billing. And so those will come out a little bit later. Our um, annual, our year starts on July 1st. So we send all these out in plenty of time for you to get them back. Um, on that, I just want to touch on, I'm sorry, my dogs just really want to be with you all, um, that the best, we have a volume number that has been put together, Mickey was involved um, with the State Library of when we think for the best services for everybody, at what volume do you, should you add another day? And so that has worked pretty well. And what you have to think about is you don't really know and I don't really know how many libraries are on every route. And so when you get to a certain amount and you're like, well, that works for me at the library, it may be putting a hardship on those other libraries because you may have some smaller libraries that that's their only day they get things. And if you're filling the vehicles with yours because you're a really high volume, that can cause problems down the road. And so I just want, there'll be a few of you that might get something um, asking you to increase a day, and that's the reason why it's it's um, because we all work together as you know you guys, especially Evergreen as a consortium. We're trying to get the best use of the the fewest dollars for everybody, but also to make sure things just don't get bogged up and stuck because they they just can't fit them all. You know, if you're doing twenty thousand volumes a year, is very different than the people who are doing you know. 200,000 or whatever. And speaking of volume, we've already surpassed 1 million items. We're on board to surpass 1 million. So it looks like we're doing great. We're already at like 864, I think, 864,000. So way to go libraries, you guys. And as Janet said, you do a bulk of it. Um, and I'm just gonna do a little shout out for our Mala Pro membership. We're doing an early bird discount on that. And it's a great way to get very inexpensive professional development for you staff. If you join Mala Pro, all of your staff can watch anything we have on the Niche Academy once it's three months past new. So even if you don't have time or enough staff to warrant to take someone away to do an hour long webinar, you'll have access to these after three months. And we have lots of really great things coming up and in the past. So just a shout out for that. And then an early shout out for I heard Janet mention surveys. So um, there'll be a survey, I think it comes out in May. 
and it is required from the LSTA. So we just most of it, we usually have great response, but just a little shout out to watch that. We kept it pretty much the same as last year. So talk fast. I think I got everything in. Any questions? Yeah. All right. So the first one, um, Cedar County. Um, right now, that is just an interim change. That's not a permanent change, correct? Um, no, we they told us it was a permanent change to location at El Dorado Springs. Okay, so we are on their board at every soft and branch <laughs> label, and we're, she's going to provide new labels next week, early next week for exactly. the El Dorado. And exactly. that change, correct? Correct. So um, it's a kind of a big deal to change. So we we checked with them a bunch to make sure this was going to be a permanent change. And by permanent, um, you know, it may not be for years, but it's for the foreseeable future. So. Okay. All right. The other question was um, regarding the uh, the annual contract that we all have to sign. Uh, each huh? individual library has to sign with you for MALA for courier services. Um, we needed to include the state subsidy days and the if your if your library is able to um, provide um, revenue for another day of service, all that needs to be on the same form. Correct. The, the annual agreement is actually a different form than the billing, so that will be on billing. On the annual agreement, it will just say you are receiving, and I believe it only lists the LSTA. The ones that are funded. It's just saying you're agreeing to follow, you know, those kind of rules. Then um, there's, I mean, there's a couple libraries in the state that do not get LSTA and are strictly private, so they get a different, they get something different. Um, but yes, it's an annual agreement more that you realize the service is being provided for you okay. by the state library and LSTA. That um, clarification. Um, anything else have questions for Jake? You know, Missouri Evergreen wouldn't exist without Mala and the Courier Service, so it accepts for you. Thank you. Thank you. I do enjoy all of you. <laughs> um, we are now to the point of other matters, and I know from the executive board meeting um, this morning, we, we, we talked about uh, bringing some other things in front of the general membership. Um, do we need to do that now or do we need to kind of talk about that? I know there were things that we were going to propose in June or do we need to do this layout officers now? Or uh, I'm trying to think about the timeline and how we need to do that. I'm looking at Diane. Yeah, so do we do like the nominating, uh, the recommendation from the nominating committee, which is Shannon for the, the officers that we will be voting on in June? Yep. Okay. Yep. Your turn. Um, so the board members are the slave officers. Slave officers and board members both. Just three board members whose terms will be complete in 2023. That is Ron Eifert, Sue Lightfoot, Ron, and Shannon McGee. So they have all three agreed to serve another term. So we'll bring those three board members to the June meeting for uh, a vote. And then we will set seat a new slate of officers on July 1. And that proposed slate of officers was Sue as past chair, Ron as chair, Rebecca Payne as vice chair, Karen Graham as secretary, and myself, Shannon Yen, as treasurer. So um, I believe by bylaws, the board votes on the officers amongst themselves, but the general membership will vote on the board members at the June meeting. Okay. Um, nominations from Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you would like to talk to yourselves and I'll correct some board member names from for, at the June meeting, we'll be glad to place those on up for a vote as well. And, and 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 I know that Jeff um, Trinkle, um, he is a uh, a board member, and he will be retiring in November. You can you look at him smile on his face. <laughs> so I do. Yeah. There there will be a board seat available uh, after his retirement. 
Um, and then we will fill that vacancy according to our bylaws and, and bring that uh, back to the membership for um, filling that probably in the December meeting. Um, was there something else that we needed to discuss? I, I'm trying to remember. Um, Do you want to give an update on the director search? Sure. Um, we have, uh, or we are now in the phase of actively seeking um, Mickey's replacement. Um, we, um, well, we know of one um, interested party, um, but I know that we are, we, we're training that instead of just doing job postings, now we are actively seeking um, uh, an executive director. That means um, today, Shannon posted on LinkedIn, um, where else did you post? So some oh. Facebook groups, the library management group on Facebook and the library think tank mm -hmm. uh, group on Facebook. And we sent it into I need a library job, I N A L J. Do you know about that? Because yeah, I, that was new to me. I need a library job.org. Okay. That might be really good for staff recruiting. <laughs> That's what wow. So, um, so yeah, so we are actively seeking. Um, the executive director's um, position to be filled. Um, once again, I'm going to encourage um, Jeff, retiring library directors, <laughs> to um, talk to um, the board, um, talk to, um, you know, talk to us about that position and what all that entails. Um, I know that was a lot of our strategic plan and actually outlining um, the executive director's um, role. Um, it's, it'll be more like how we are as library directors, you know, where the board um, hires a library director, the library director does, does his or her thing, um, and therefore that's, that's kind of the setup that, we're, that we are um, having for the executive position. So, um, was there anything else from circulation or from cataloging that we needed to make a mention of? I know you briefly talked about things that we're, we're going to be talking about in June. Um, data, data integrity and things like that. So um, there's a lot more things going on in the background, but once again, we encourage your participation and we hear your voice. Um, anything else that we need to talk about? Yeah, it's Ron. Just for the good of the order, um, Katie Earnhardt, the library director at Kate Library, who is MPLD president, is going to be on the Lawrence O'Donnell show tonight on MSNBC to talk about the um, library funding in House Bill 12. We wish you well, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to personally thank Mickey for setting it up here, um, our, our first users conference, um, and handling all the details that uh, was involved with that. I want to thank Mornex for the use of their awesome space. I think it was a really great yeah. setup for us. Um, and I especially want to thank um, Erica and Gayla for joining us from Equinox. We really appreciate um, you being here with us and hearing firsthand some of our challenges and struggles. And <laughs> just because I need to help to get to that, you know, you send me help tickets. I'm going to listen to you. Um, yeah, that's been the whole, um, you know, that, that's been the joke. But seriously, the amount of support and the, uh, the, the quick response time is so greatly appreciated. I know that if anybody that's been in a different ILS system, um, that there, there was no technical support, uh, or you might be on the phone for hours on hold, or you might do an email that might get answered, might not. These people are right there with us, really ready to respond, and we so value and appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, what else do we need to do? Adjourn. Oh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Kate. Second, please. Second. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs>